Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. This is episode 226, What is a Potty Pause? I have an article that Andrea wrote a while back on the blog and we wanted to bring it to the podcast because it's really relevant to what a lot of you are going through. And so I think it would be really helpful. You can find the article, the show notes, all the links to everything I mentioned today over at godiaperfree.com 226. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them there as well. So without further ado, by Andrea Olson, when EC stops working, the elimination communication potty pause. Potty pause, a not so great word. Let me share what it is and what to do about it. So you're doing elimination communication with your baby and everything was going great for the last few weeks or months. You caught every poo and almost every pee or the majority thereof. You may not even have studied up on infant potty training. You've just had such great beginner's luck. But now, oh my, sheesh, your baby pees right after you take her off the potty. On the floor. She arches every time you try to put her on the mini potty. Before, she happily went along with you. You were in harmony. But now, let's just call it the opposite of harmony, and it's gone on for several days. You are royally frustrated. Understatement? You need help, so here it is. An alternative view of the potty pause. I'm not going to teach you how to address or fix the potty pause in this article. Instead, I'm going to pass on vital information that was handed to me from a longtime diaper-free baby mentor in Seattle, Kirsty Connor. It's an ex- excerpt from my book, Andrea's book, Go Diaper Free, which covers how to simply begin an EC practice with your baby. Here it is. So this is the article within the article by Kirsty Connor, longtime diaper-free baby mentor in Seattle, Washington. EC phases. I've noticed that there seem to be two times in a child's life with EC when problems arise, and I think that during both of these times, it is frustrating for the adults involved, and also for the child involved, but they can't tell you clearly. And with life being busy, it is easy to decide to put the diapers back on and wait until things improve. However, it would be better to continue doing what you are doing. This time of discord is very important to the process, and even though there may be more misses, this is a time of great strides for a child. When your child begins to walk or talk, they stumble and stutter and make mistakes. You wouldn't see your child struggling to walk and then think, she's not ready to walk yet, because she isn't perfect at it yet, so I'm going to confine her to a safe environment where she cannot walk, and I will keep her there until she is ready to walk. Instead, you do what you can to keep her safe while she stumbles and falls and learns to teeter and totter and finally, eventually, walk. She fails while she is learning, and as a parent, we tolerate these failures because we know it is part of the learning process. However, when it comes to to the EC process and we've been having success, somehow as our child begins to learn that they are a part of the process and they can control both when and where they potty, parents become confused. Why is there now failure when before there was so much success? I think that we fail to realize, what we fail to to realize is that our measure of success needs to change at this point. Children learn how long they can hold the contents of their bladder by holding it so long they can't hold it any longer. They are in touch with the elimination process. They know what it feels like when their bladder is full. But what they don't know is, how long can I wait before it's too late? They get involved with other activities and they don't want to stop, even if they have that full bladder feeling. They may be involved in this experimentation process when, based on timing or intuition, an adult decides to potty the child, who protests vehemently. Then as soon as you take the child off the potty, they realize that they have exceeded their potty holding limit and they pee on the floor. The adult reaction is frustration. Why is this happening? But in fact, the learning process is happening. And this is a great time to continue your communication with your child. Oh, you are peeing. Next time, if you let me know, I can help you put it in the potty. Very low key. So my theory is that this part of the learning process happens sometime between 7 and 12 months. What we did during this time was try a few different locations. Mini potty, then sink with mirror regular toilet with insert, then outdoors. We were trying to distract her from her bladder holding experiment long enough for her to pee. 
If she peed, great. If not, we used either a diaper backup, we put her on some sort of impervious surface, or we lived dangerously, knowing that we'd be cleaning up a miss in the near future. Sometimes she surprised us and held it much longer than we suspected that she could, and we both learned. Sometimes she peed almost as soon as we let her go back to her chosen activity, and we both learned. The process smoothed back out again for a time, but our success rate was probably never as high as it had been before our daughter learned that she could delay the inevitable if it suited her. Then, between 12 and 16 months, the misses begin to increase again, and for us, this was the real key to our daughter graduating. She became very resistant to us ECing based on timing, which we had done from, her, from birth with her. Although we had been signing with her and talking with her about elimination throughout our journey, at this stage, she was really acting out that she wanted control over this part of her life. It resulted in quite a few misses. But instead of diapering her back up and waiting until later when we thought she was ready, we gave her more control instead of less. We would ask her if she had to potty when we thought she should have to go or if we were heading out for a trip. And if she gave us a negative response, we would believe her, even if we were skeptical. We allowed her the ability to have confidence in knowing her body, even if sometimes it turned out she was wrong. The amount of time that it took her to realize that this was her thing and we were no longer the ones in control of where and when she pottied, she was completely diaper-free within one month, and about two and a half months later, she is completely miss-free. I'm not saying this timetable will apply to everyone. My point is this. When a child who's on the EC journey has a series of misses, instead of considering it a potty pause, maybe consider it as part of the process and that the child is really expressing that they realize they are part of the process and support that. Instead of backing off and diapering them up and waiting, sending them mixed signals that they aren't trusted to learn this skill because it is simply too messy. Thanks for the amazing contribution, Kirsty. Now, if you're listening, this is Nicole again. The, that was the article by Andrea with the excerpt from Christy. Sorry, Kirsty. And I just wanted to add that we have a couple resources if this is the phase that you're in right now. We have the Potty Pause Resolution mini course, and it will help you understand what's happening when your baby resists, learn the steps through it, really the nuts and bolts of how to get through the potty pause and hopefully prevent either prevent it from happening anymore or at least prevent it from being quite so dreadful. Of course, the Go Diaper Free book will be linked in here. And if you are struggling with this potty pause or potty training strike when your child is older than 16 months, uh, in that 16 to 18 month range or older, you're going to want to look at the tiny potty training book. Plenty of people decide when they've gone through EC, if it's not quite wrapping up by that 16 or 18 month mark, that they want to do a potty training experience with the tiny potty training book. And that can really be a great way to just finish everything off and give your child the independence that they're really seeking. We also have a couple programs, digital programs. There is the Movers and Shakers uh, Mobile Baby EC program. And that is for that 7 to 12 month stage that Kirsty mentioned in her article. If you are between 12 and 18 months, the Passing the Baton EC program is what you're going to look for. Both of those programs have extensive troubleshooting sections. And of course, the potty pause always comes up in both of those age ranges. So it's covered in there as well. All of the why, all of the nuts and bolts, everything you're going to need for that. So thank you everyone for joining me today. What do you think about this concept? Let us know. Head over to the blog, godiperfree.com slash 226. Does it resonate with you? Do you have other thoughts or experiences of how to end a potty pause or a full on potty strike? Please head on over and share with us and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm. 